move on to a legend in the radio business, Mr. Mike O'Mara. Mike, how are you? Eric, how you doing? Thank you, sir, for calling in. Uh, Mike O'Mara is from the uh, former team of Don and Mike, who were syndicated all around the country and started up the Mike O'Mara Show in 2009. He's been doing very well with his podcast network, and now he has a book. Open mic from corporate radio to new media. Mike, what can you tell me about this book? Uh, I can tell you that, uh, you know, the first thing I want to say hearing you talk about a PS4 is, hey, guys, not now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. I, uh, Eric, let me tell you something. Um, I'm up my house uh, in the great state of Maine. Okay. And I want to just tell a little story about, uh, you know, when you're trying to do any kind of interview or you want a quiet moment, I went to the one part of the house that I thought would be the quietest part of the mm-hmm. house, and I'm bringing about nine people in here, and about eight of them just came up the stairs clunking luggage. The bathroom? <laughs> and I, I am going to tell you something that, that I also called you, not to say this house is old, but hearing you talk about uh, a PS4, I actually, this is a true story, I called you on a rotary dial telephone. Oh, my God. I, I, don't, I don't even remember the last time I used a rot- rotary dial telephone, but this is up uh, on the coast of Maine in a very old house. And just hearing you talk uh, as I was waiting on hold and realizing that I was using it, I'm staring at this thing like it's, uh, like it's something I'll never see again. And I, I have to ask you how the audio quality is because this, this phone was used uh, seriously probably back as far as the early 1950s, and I'm not exaggerating. Mike, well, in a digital world where, uh, where cell phones rule all, it's nice to be calling from a landline. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, we used to, you know, you're a producer, and uh, I've done plenty of these where it's still not reliable, and cell phones, so when I can be near a landline, I will always call on a landline. But I appreciate you having me on, and I, I, I look forward to chatting about uh, the book, because uh, it's a labor of love, and we're really excited about it. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm excited about uh, the response the book is getting, and a little bit surprised as well. Um, it's available on Amazon, also available for the Kindle, which I download. You're the first book that I've ever downloaded for a Kindle. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Wow. It, the Kindle sales are doing really, really well with the book, and uh, the, the primary motivating factor for uh, this entire project was to service our fan base uh, online with the uh, the Mike O'Mara Show at MikeOmaraShow.com. And, uh, you know, if we can bring other people to the party, uh, I think really uh, the book, the book just tends to speak to people that went through any kind of a downsizing, went through any kind of a layoff, went through uh, a reinvention, which is really, that's, that's really what the book is about. It's about, about how to reinvent yourself. And so many people had to reinvent themselves uh, during the recession right. and are still reinventing themselves. And coming out on the other side, not only whole but ultimately happier. Which uh, you know, there were a lot of surprises during that, that that little journey. And for a lot of people that listen to this channel that are Opie and Anthony fans, you know the history of, of the show as far as all the problems that Opie and, An- Opie and Anthony went through, from uh, Sex for Sam to Satellite to the syndication on CBS, leaving CBS, coming just to Sirius XM after the merger. You know all those stories. This is another tale of um, a very popular radio show, a duo at one point. Uh, going through similar things where they were all over the country on terrestrial radio. Um, one, Mike went through a hard time um, when Don decided to um, leave, take leave of radio and re- leave of the show, reinvented himself uh, with a whole cast of characters for the Mike O'Mara show, only to fall victim to the CBS downsizing through no fault of his own and other shows. It started pretty much with KLSX in Los Angeles where they got rid of Adam Carolla and Tom Likas and everybody that was on that channel. And then it just went across the country where all these FM channels became sports or Spanish. And despite how well they were doing, syndication and all that, they still got the axe just because it was cheaper to have a sports channel or a Spanish channel than pay, pay out all these big contracts and, and what have you. Mike started up a podcast network after leaving Terrestrial Radio, which I... From what I understand, you were not really sold on doing podcasting. No, not at all. Um, one of my partners, Oscar Santana, from the old Big O and Duke show, which uh, you know people around Washington and Arizona would be aware of. Uh, I don't want to say that he dragged me kicking and screaming, but he said he definitely had to sell me. And you mentioned Adam Carolla, and uh, that was a name that was uh, was very prominent when Oscar was selling me on the idea because Adam had uh, been very very successful launching his own podcast. Uh, but I I was brand new to it. You know, my idea of a podcast was uh, you know a kid in the basement. In his mother's basement, you know, Rupert Pumpkin down there, just a uh, pumpkin, you know, just screaming, Mom, be quiet, I'm trying to do a show. And I, I didn't want to do it. And I was, I was worried about it. And I certainly didn't think I was going to be making a living uh, doing it as well. And it ended up being uh, something that, uh, 
that, that was just a, a true joy to do and the most satisfying thing I've done in my career and the most pleasurable thing I've done in my career. Uh, you know, Don and I had a tremendous run, and uh, we really had a, a, a very good network across the country. And after that, it, it was I was kind of uh, without a rudder. I, I didn't know what was going on. And, uh, you know, the, the idea of uh, after after the Michael O'Mara show on terrestrial radio uh, got uh, the boot when they flipped to the sports format that you mentioned, I... Um, I, I, all I wanted to do was get another radio gig, and I went to work uh, across the street at another FM. And the strange thing about that was uh, this was a classic rock station where I was hired to do a morning show uh, with another guy named Kirk McEwen. And I immediately walked into that situation, and because I just wanted a gig, I probably didn't vet them as much as I should have, and I walked right into the exact same situation where I smelled it immediately that they were going to have some sort of format change, and that was to go to right-wing talk. So within a two-year, two-and-a-half-year period, uh, after a, a, about a 20-year 20, 20 run, um, I, was, I was out the door again, and it was just amazing. And the only thing I did... Uh, during that period that I did the morning show on terrestrial radio was hold on to my podcast. So I would do the morning show till 9 o'clock in the morning. I would uh, beat feet out of D.C. Uh, to the Virginia suburbs to do my podcast. And it was during that period of time that I realized uh, I'm not having fun doing this terrestrial radio show, but I am having a blast doing the podcast. And we just kept chugging. And then when they flipped that format, the podcast became my uh, my sole radio show, my right. soul show, rather. And it's just uh, continued to grow, in, and I'm just uh, I'm having so much fun. Uh, it's a condensed version of what I've done my entire career. It's 79 minutes, and we've got, uh, we've got a very active audience, and it's just a lot of fun to do the show. I'm having more fun now than I've ever had before, and one of the reasons for that is because of the mobility of it. I mean, I'm doing. I'm up here in a uh, uh, you know a cottage on the coast of Maine that was probably built in the uh, early 1900s, and we're moving the whole thing in here, and we're going to have all the guys doing a, a week of shows from here, and we can take the show on the road. I can do the show anywhere I want to do the show, and the technology exists now to do it and do it with the uh, broadcast quality. And I'm having so much fun, and it also makes for great content when you get a bunch of uh, idiots under one roof in different locations. We're, we're just having so much fun. It's terrific. Mike, let me just ask you a quick question as far as um, <clears throat> finding out that you're done with Terrestrial. Um, you shop around. You have an agent. You're not getting bites from any other networks, any other channels. Right. What is from the business point, uh, the business model there, what is the setup as far as doing a network the way you did it? Not just like where it's a couple of guys can just record into a, a MacBook and, and put it up on uh, on Libsyn and iTunes, right. but to do an actual network as a business model to get advertisers, to get sponsorships, to get all these things. What does it take to do that? How long does it take to do that? Well, the the, the, the network that you talk about, and there, there are a limited amount of shows. I don't have a lot of shows on the network. I've got uh, It's Mickey, which is uh, it's Mickey Coachella, who's a, former, a very, very uh, legendary morning man in Baltimore that uh, left terrestrial radio, and he's doing a podcast. And then I've got a highlight show uh, of, of my week of shows that comes on once a week. And uh, we have a tech show called Tech 411, and then we've got uh, Rob Spiewak, uh, who does uh, another show once a week as well. All the shows on the network are basically value-added for, uh, for my advertisers. MichaelMara.com. Uh, sorry, MichaelMaraShow.com. Michael Mara Show on Twitter. The book is Open Mike from Corporate Radio to New Media. It's available on Amazon and on Kindle. Um, I definitely suggest getting it if you're a radiophile like myself to see how other people deal with uh, all the sides of the business, not just the shows that you love to hear that everybody kind of goes through the same bullshit with this industry. And uh, you can recover from it. Now it's a do-it-yourself kind of world. Mike is a classic example of doing it all by yourself. Yeah, and I wanted to say one last thing, too, uh, you know, since, uh, you know, with Opie and Anthony and with uh, Don Geronimo and people that I've worked with, you know, there are a lot of ups and downs, and people do move on. And, and one of the things uh, that, that, I, that I really touch on in the book also is that, you know, at the end of the day, you realize that we're all in this insane business, and we're we're just trying to survive. You know, we're feeding our families like anybody else. And uh, you know, I I really I really do. Uh, I just turned fifty five. I'm, I'm sitting here. I do I do a lot of reflecting on on my career. And the fact is that um, 
I really genuinely, I told you this uh, off air uh, when we chatted before, that, you know, we had a pretty good radio feud back in the day with Opie and Anthony. And, and the fact is that, you know, with, with all of that, when the microphones are on, it's a different reality than, than real life. And ultimately, with people that I've worked with, and if there are hurt feelings when people go in one direction or another direction or you have a radio feud, ultimately I think it's necessary to to really move forward and the buck stops with you. And that's why, you know, with, with ONA and also with Don Geronimo and with everyone else, it, it just – does no good to look back and to you know and to not keep your eyes on what's the next big thing because sometimes things step up and surprise you and that's why when I said to you and I meant it that I wish Opie and Anthony nothing but the uh, the, the best and they're survivors just like Don's a survivor and I'm a survivor and you know who knows the next time we're going to have to you know deal with another bump in the road and I have tremendous respect for all the people in our business that do that and you know this Eric it is a business where you have to be ready you have to always be in the athletic position position because you never know where the ball's coming you right. know and i have a tremendous amount of esteem for all the people that i've that i've worked with and i've, and I've gotten along better with some than, than with others but the fact is i do ultimately wish everybody the very very best because uh it's a tough business to to you know to maintain your sanity in, and it's a tough business to you know to, to survive and right. I, I really have a lot of respect for people that i've worked with uh, i can't speak for opie and anthony themselves but i i think the uh, the feeling is, as far as uh, Don and Mike go, that you know it's all water under the bridge. Everyone's moved on, and wishing everybody the best on that. Yeah, and uh, it's you know as I said, the uh, the podcast world is is new and it's it's growing, and I think there's a there's a tremendous uh, potential audience out there as well as the one that we already have. And uh, uh, you know I didn't think at this stage of my career I'd really be looking forward to the future as much as I am now. And it's all basically in the book, including some very twisted things and why I grew up the abnormal person that I am today. MikeOmeraShow.com, Mike O'Mara Show on Twitter. The book is Open Mike from Corporate Radio to New Media, available on Amazon. Mike, thank you so much for calling uh, and returning the favor of uh, allowing me to return the favor, actually, for an interview that we did um, not too long ago, which is going to come up. I'm going to put it online somewhere uh, called the Radio Inquisition, and I interview Mike about his whole history with Don and Mike and uh, the Mike O'Mara Show and everything else. That will be coming soon. Mike, thank you so much for your time. Eric, a pleasure. Thanks a lot, man. Take care. Bye-bye.